Picture this, a couple, Mr. Bly and Miss Trot, once united by the birth of their child, now at odds in a heated custody battle. The initial orders made were quite drastic. The child was to live solely with Miss Trot. Mr. Bly, once a figure of paternal love, was ordered to have no contact with his own offspring. The ties of kinship seemed to be severed completely when the court allowed for the child's name to be changed. The echo of the gavel signified not just the end of a hearing, but the beginning of a hard-fought legal battle. Mr. Bly was not one to sit idle. He decided to challenge these orders, to fight for his right to be a part of his child's life. However, the battle was far from over, as Mr. Bly would soon challenge these decisions. Unsatisfied with the outcomes, Mr. Bly appealed, alleging bias, incompetence of counsel, and the failure to adjourn the hearing. Let's delve into that. Bias, a heavy charge, implies that the judge's opinion was unalterable, irrespective of the evidence presented. Then, there's incompetence of counsel. This contention isn't just about alleging that your lawyer didn't do a good job. It's about proving that their incompetence led to an unjust outcome. Lastly, the failure to adjourn the hearing. This implies that the judge didn't provide enough time for the parties to make their case or prepare. But remember, it's not enough to just make these allegations. You need to back them up with substantial evidence. The appeal was not without its complications, involving a complex maze of legalities. Indeed, the path of appeals is often fraught with ambiguity and uncertainty, requiring a keen understanding of the law and its intricacies. Opening. The case was steeped in legal intricacies, from the Family Law Act to the Federal Circuit and Family Court of Australia Act and Rules. The legal labyrinth in which Bly and Trott was entrenched was indeed complex. The Family Law Act, a cornerstone of family law in Australia, was central to the case. This legislation governs matters relating to divorce, child custody, and property settlement, among others. Equally vital was the Federal Circuit and Family Court of Australia Act and Rules, which established the court's jurisdiction and procedural guidelines. The court, in its wisdom, also drew on relevant precedents, such as the Frazier and Valdez and Maddox and Dana cases. These cases, in their own right, had set the bar for how allegations of bias and incompetence of counsel are handled. Closing, this dense legal framework formed the backbone of the ensuing appeal. From the court's perspective, allegations of incompetence and bias required solid proof. The Bly and Trot case brought this to light in no uncertain terms. Just an allegation of incompetence isn't sufficient. It's imperative that one demonstrates how this incompetence resulted in an unjust outcome. This is no easy task, and it requires meticulous attention to detail and a comprehensive understanding of the legal proceedings. In the same vein, claims of bias aren't taken at face value. They demand compelling evidence that shows a judge's opinion was so rigid it could not be altered, regardless of the arguments presented. Bias, in essence, is a strong accusation, and it's not something courts take lightly. These aspects of the case underline the importance of substantiating any claims made during an appeal. The court was clear. Allegations are not enough. They must be substantiated. It's a crucial lesson for anyone venturing into the legal world and a reminder of the weight and responsibility that comes with it. The appeal's crux, however, was centered on security costs. This was where things got really interesting. The court had to weigh the respondent's financial position against the appellant's history of not paying costs a challenge further complicated by Mr. Bly's overseas residence. This made enforcing the payment of costs a rather tricky affair. Yet, in the grand scheme of things, the court was steadfast in its pursuit of justice. In the end, the court found that justice favored making the order for security for costs. The verdict was eventually delivered. The application for review was dismissed. Mr. Bly was ordered to pay $1,709.65 within 28 days, a decision that underscored the importance of financial standing in security costs appeals. From this case, we learn the importance of substantial evidence when alleging bias or incompetence, and the critical role of financial standing when appealing for security costs.